Overlays are the visual personality of your stream. So it's really important that we get them set up right. If you need help on the steps before setting up your first overlay, I have those videos in the description below. As always, there are chapter markers in this video if you're looking for something in particular. Aside from that, let's do it. Before we get started, a couple things. One, I am not sponsored by any of these companies. I am just merely showing you that they exist so you can get overlays because this video is only gonna be about setting up an overlay. It's not gonna be showing you how to make one from scratch in Photoshop or anything like that. I could do that in a separate video, but for now, you should probably go get an overlay, either a free one or a paid one, like through own.tv, Nerd or Die, Stream Elements has some free ones. So I would recommend just going into here, looking around and seeing if you can acquire some sort of overlay package. I do have an own code in my description, uh, but it's not a sponsored video, I promise. It's just, I'm not showing you how to make one in Photoshop. This is not a Photoshop tutorial. And with that out of the way, let's hop into OBS. There are a few essential scenes that every streamer needs. One of those scenes is a gameplay slash screen recording scene. First thing you wanna do is you wanna head down to the plus sign under scenes. Go ahead and add scene. We're gonna name this one a uh, gameplay scene. We're gonna click OK. So now that we have our gameplay scene, we'll add some sources, but I want you to ignore this audio mixer for now because this is going to be in a separate guide showing you how to set up the audio stuff. But for now, what you need is to hit this plus button at the bottom of the sources column. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for our overlay. Now, our overlay, whether you bought it, made it, whatever, is either going to be static or animated. If it's an animated, then you're going to want to hit media source. If it's static, then you're gonna to wanna to hit the image button instead. So let's start with an animated one. Let's go for a media source. I'm going to title this one animated overlay. I'm going to click okay. And we're gonna make sure that we hit loop before we do anything. This makes it so if your animations only last for, you know, two to three, four seconds, that they loop so they keep going because it would be really awkward if you're, you had like a light bar that went around something and then just like stopped permanently. Now we hit browse and let's go ahead and find it. After lots of searching, I finally found my old owned.tv overlay package. As you notice, it is a 20 second long video file that pretty much can only use in certain locations because it's got a weird file type. And then I'm going to hit okay. Now you'll notice that it's real small and you don't want it real small. So the easiest thing to do is to right click, make sure it's it's highlighted, and you're going to want to find transform, and then you're going to want to fit to screen. Okay, so now that we have the first piece of our animated overlay, let's go ahead and add something else. Let's add our camera frame. In order to add the camera frame, we need to go back down to the plus icon, and then we need to do media source again. If it's an animated, if it's a still, then you're gonna wanna do image instead, But I think it's animated, so let's do that again. And we're gonna name this one camera border. Again, we're going to loop it, always loop it. And then we're gonna find that one. Once we found it, we're gonna hit okay. Okay, so you're gonna notice it's gonna appear in the top left-hand corner. I personally do not like having my camera in the top left-hand corner, partially because if you stream to Twitch, uh, then you're gonna notice that it's gonna be hovering over certain things in the, the previews when people are scrolling. Also, I just kind of find it in the way on the left side, so I actually tend to like to put it down on the bottom right-hand corner. Also going to make it a little bit smaller, because again, this is a gameplay screen. You don't really need to see much of me. So now that we have part of this set up, let's go ahead and add the camera. So in order to add the camera, it's like the like anything else, you need to hit the plus button in the source menu. And then you need to go up to video capture device, go down to. And for me, I already have one, so I'm going to hit add existing. And then boom, got a giant screen. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lower this. And sometimes it helps to bring this back into the middle make it nice and big. And then what you can do is you can kind of try to line this up, right? Now it's okay if it overhangs just a little bit and I'll show you why. Make sure you don't grab from the sides though. You need to make sure, cause that'll ruin the aspect ratio. Make sure you're grabbing from the corners only. I think that looks about right. So now you'll notice that it doesn't quite 
fit. The reason is, is because we need to layer the border on top of the camera. So what we'll do is we'll go to the border and we'll drag it over the top. And now it looks like it fits directly on top of it. Perfect. Now it's a lot cleaner. And what we're going to do is we're going to, before we move anything, we're going to go ahead and hit the plus icon again. And we're going to start a group. And we're going to call this one camera group. Okay. See here. We're going to go ahead and click on the camera border and drag it to where it fits inside of the camera group. And we're going to drag this video capture device also so it fits underneath in the camera group. Sometimes you might have to drag it in the camera group and then drag it underneath or we'll drag the border on top, something like that. If we close it with this little tiny arrow, then it will be together. Now, what, the reason you would want to make this group is not only to keep it organized because when you have a bunch of sources, it's gonna get pretty cluttered, but it's also because if you wanna just click on the camera group, it will highlight everything underneath it. And then you could just move it and then resize it, however you want. So now it's a lot easier to mess around with without having to replace it and reposition it. So another really cool tip is that your arrow keys can actually move your frame and whatever object you have selected left or right, just like this. So I'm holding the right arrow key. And as you can see, it's just kind of nudging it really fast across the screen. This is really helpful if you want to line things up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put this down here, resize it. I think that looks, looks doable for now. Of course, one of the most important things is what you're capturing. So in order to do that, you would hit the plus icon again, and then you're going to go to display capture. And I already have a display capture, so I'm going to click that. Make sure that whatever new sources you add are in the correct order they need to be. Obviously the display capture being on top of everything means that none of the other elements will be seen. So we're gonna go ahead and scoot that one all the way down. That way the overlay can also sit right on top of that display capture. Another really important scene to have is a scene where if you need to go to the bathroom or something, you can do that while not having your camera on. So let's go ahead and set up a be right back scene. In order to do a be right back scene, you need to come over to the scene selection and add scene. Be right back. All right, and the first thing we need to do is add a source. We're gonna add an image source because ours is not animated. BRB, be number one. We'll browse, and then we'll hit our pause scene. And again, we will fit this to fit the whole screen. So we'll right click, we'll hit transform and then fit to screen. And now we have a be right back scene. So this is what it would be like if you decided to do your video capture device, your camera. Um, again, you're walking away, so I wouldn't recommend using this video. Another thing you can do is just have your chat box going here. You put a chat box on screen using stream elements or some other browser source just to keep people preoccupied while you're away on going to the bathroom or getting some food or something. So now that we have your escape scene, your get away from people scene, let's go ahead and add a starting soon screen because maybe you don't want to just open your stream up with you talking. Maybe you want to kind of build it up a little bit, right? Some people do that. So we'll do a starting soon and we'll have an image source for this. It'll be starting. We'll hit browse and we'll look for it again. Be our starting banner. Again, same idea, just because these are all pretty kind of generic. Got them a while ago. I don't use them anymore, but they do the job and they were pretty cheap. So again, a good example of you could just have this sit here and you don't really need anything crazy going on. You can put a chat box in here. You can put some other sort of video in here. It's another good idea. So now that we have a starting soon, I might want to put that up near the top just so it's a little bit organized. We have starting soon, we have a gameplay, and we have a be right back screen. Let's go ahead and add another scene. And this scene will be our talking scene. This will be the one where you have that conversation with your audience. Maybe you're not taking a bathroom break, but you just wanted to discuss a few things. So we'll do this one as our talking scene. This will probably be the other scene besides the gameplay scene where you have a little more things going on. So let's hit our plus sign. Let's go for our, our image or depending on what you have. Hit okay. And then we'll browse. Once we have it up, we hit okay, like normal. And then we also want to right click and transform. 
and 50 screen like normal. You can always hit control F as well. This particular overlay comes equipped with a few options. It's got socials down here. It's got obviously the subscriber bar and stuff. It has a live chat section. It also has a place where you can put your webcam or your gameplay on either of these screens. So let me show an example of one of the ways you can do it. So let's come down here to the plus sign. Let's go ahead and add ourselves our camera back in and my existing. And remember, this is a talking source, talking scene. So we're gonna wanna probably put the camera here. And don't forget, you can drag the overlay over the top of your camera that way it, the edges look a little bit better. But there's this little box over here. Let's go ahead and add our display recording and let's downsize it to fit that little box. Again, to add that source, we would need to hit the plus sign and we would need to hit the display capture source. We already have one, so let's hit that. Reposition this and minimize it so we can get it where it needs to go. We can always drag that also under the overlay. Doesn't really matter where you put it. And boom, look at that. Fits basically perfectly now that we've dragged it underneath the overlay. You will have to add your live chat, obviously, using you know stream elements or some sort of browser source thing. And the way you would do that is you would click browser source and you would create chat box. Uh, I will make a new one. Just call it chat two. If you use stream elements or something similar to that, you'll basically go in there, you'll find your overlay and you'll hit the share or the little, whatever icon allows, whatever icon gives you the URL source. And then you'll just copy and paste it into this bar and you'll size it accordingly. And then you'll hit okay. And it will give you the chance to put that down here. All right, so once you resize it, and get it to where it needs to be. You can hit one of the test options in stream elements or whatever, and it will start sending some, you know, test chatters basically in the box. Another thing that you're gonna basically wanna do in a screen like this is you're gonna wanna add your Twitter, your Facebook, your YouTube handles. Best way to do that, or the easiest way rather, is to hit the plus sign and then go to text. And you're gonna wanna add, let's say we'll make this Twitter. You're gonna to wanna to add your handle here. So at creator apology, select your font. Probably wanna to change to something that's pretty pretty darn noticeable. I'll do Bebus. 256 might be high. So we'll drop that down to 48 and see how we do. Um, again, you can underline, you can do a whole bunch of things to it. For now, I'm just gonna hit okay, hit okay. I'm gonna drag this bad boy down here. So now I've made the other the other two. The easiest way to do this is to just literally control C and then click on the screen and control V and it, another one shall appear. And you just drag it wherever you need it to go. That's probably the easiest way. Now that I have these three here, these don't change or move or anything unless you, you know, you really want them to. So that's all done. This is all completed. The, the biggest thing that you'll have to learn from either one of my other videos that I'll be doing or someone else's stuff is how to do the alerts. The alerts are going to be things like when you get a new subscriber, they're going to appear here, a uh, new follower is going to appear there, new donator, blah, blah, blah. And that stuff you need to do with things like stream elements, like I was saying. Finally, the last thing that you need is an, an ending screen, a goodbye screen. You don't need this, I guess, but if you want to use it because you bought a pack, then you can ending. For this ending scene, it's basically the same thing as before. You just need to go ahead and add your image. I'm gonna call this one ending. I'm gonna find it again. Click OK. Same deal as always. You right click and you hit the screen. You can put whatever you want here. It could be a buy video, it could be with the chat again as you're leaving. It doesn't really matter, it's completely up to you. Now we can add our stinger transition. Your stinger transition is the thing that basically, as you switch scenes, it will cover the switch. It will cover the change of scenes, which so it doesn't look quite as awkward. So in normal scenarios, your theme transition is going to look something like this. Very rapid cross dissolve, which isn't 
terrible, but as you can see, if you go kind of quickly, it looks a little awkward. So what most people do is they add a stinger transition, a custom stinger transition. In order to do that, you'll go ahead and hit the scene transitions, little sub tab. In order to add a stinger, you're gonna hit this little plus sign. I'm gonna hit stinger. I don't know why it's called a stinger. That's something I do not know. Hit okay. And then you're gonna to wanna to go find that file. So now that I've found that file, let's go ahead and scroll to the bottom. This is really important, so I'll make it a little bit bigger. You're gonna to wanna to go down to preview transition. This is going to tell you and show you if it looks smooth or not. So hit preview transition, and as you can see, the second scene, the B scene, that we're trying to switch to immediately shows up. So what's the point of the, of the transition if it just immediately appears? We're trying to use the transition as a veil to hide the awkwardness of the switch. If I preview it again, you'll see it immediately switches. So let's go ahead and add to our transition point, basically delaying or making the transition point somewhere different. Let's add 1000 milliseconds. You may not need to add this much. You need to adjust it to whatever you your transition allows, but let's say I add 1000. If you look right there, you can see that the switch is still visible, which is not what we want. So let's add a bit more, pop this up to 1800. Let's see how it looks with 1800. Good, awesome. The next scene is not visible until the walls, the jaws kind of collide, and then it does the switch and then it opens back up and it looks a whole lot smoother. So 1800 will be fine for me. Make sure you find out what is good for you and then hit okay. And let's see if it works. I'll hit my talking scene. It's pretty crispy to me. Hit the gameplay scene. As you can see, it works just fine. You may have noticed that I didn't go over the chat box or the alerts. I felt like that would be better in a different video showing how to do those and give it more attention. If you're interested in a video about alert boxes and chat boxes and you know the stream integration stuff, then definitely hit the comments below. Don't forget to check out the video in the corner, the recommended video from YouTube. They think that you will enjoy this. Are they right?